Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll see that what all activities are there which deals in data table because it covers a big patch of the automation activities and the automation scenarios. So we'll see first type in data table so that we could see all the activities related to it. So okay. So first we're gonna build a data table on which we're gonna do the operation. So we'll drag in a build data table and you we'll just have to click on it and you can now over here edit in the columns, name, the column type, the length. So maximum length is 100. So if you give it minus one, so then there is no maximum defined. So it could be an integer, it could be a string. So then you pass in the name. So the name has to be string, it, couldn't, it could not be integer. So you select in the data type from your, then okay. And you want the null values to be entered or you don't want, you can specify it here. Then I'll be entering great, which is also string. So I'll enter in the values here. So if this is one, this is should be, this is A, then this is two, then this is, then this is B, and then similarly, I'll add in one more value, which is three, then this is this. We have a data table in place now. We'll see that we already have the variables or not, so we do not have it. So we'll create a variable. The shortcut I've already told is control K, and you get this set value here. And then all you have to do is you have to just declare the name it DT. So once you have the data table in place, you want to check your data table to be placed in a single string and you could see the value. So you have output data table for that. So you pass in the DT and then you here have a variable, you have to declare a variable of string type. So your DT would be present here in string. So if you want to check that, uh, you know, uh, what's the string that what's the data of a data table, you can just have a right line. str dt okay now we'll move on to the other one which is lookup data table so as the name suggests it's it searches for a it so as the name suggests it looks up for a value in your dt whether it's present or not and you can even you know if you search for this one that you search that in this particular column is one present or not so you could easily do it now, if you want to search that if one is present, then what is the corresponding name to it or what is the corresponding grade to it? You could do that using data table, lookup data table. So if we go on to lookup data table, then you see here that it asks for a DT, which is your DT declared. Then the lookup value you want to search. So I want to search for one. The column index you want to search to or the column name you want to search. You want to search. Okay. So I name it column index that I want to search this one in column index zero. Now this is the cell value that it will return you that in which particular cell is it present. And this is the target column that if it is present, then what is the corresponding value in the next column for it? So over here if you pass in name and uh, we have a right line here so that we could see what the value is so we'll see first what is the cell value so in what variable have we assigned the cell value let me check that it's in name okay so name there you go and okay. And row index. So this is the row index of the found cell. So we'll even see that. What's the row index? Okay. 
class. I think this is an integer, so we'll have to convert it to string. And we click on run to see what the value is. So let's run. So let's go to the output panel to check the result. So this is our data table present in string. The cell value is should be and the row index is zero. So now if we go to the data table, so we see over here that the cell value is the corresponding value of name to one. So why this should be being given out? Why not grade? So because here in the column name, they've given that we want the name. So if we type it here, grade, okay. So uh, the this is zero because this is the first row. It would be one if we if the searched value is in the second row. It would be two if it's in the third row. And if we do not want the name, we want the grade. That if ID one is present, what's the grade for ID one? So we have passed in here grade. Over here in column name, we have passed in grade. So now again we'll check. So to make it look a little more clear we'll add in few spaces because it was way too clumsy in the output panel we we'll click on run and now what we'll get that the row is zero but the grade is a the name would not be printed because now in the column name we have passed in grade so we see the output panel so the cell value the grade is a and the row index is zero and this is our gt okay so moving on to the next we have a clear data table. What it does is it would delete all the data in your data table and what will remain is just the column names. So we'll pass in that DT and that's it. So there's this clone method also. What does it do is the clone methods, it uh, creates a data table similar to your previous data table, keeping only the headers and not the data. So this clear data table is somewhat the same that it clears out all the value and what remains is just the headers. So now if we execute it, if we execute this, uh, all the data from our data table would be erased. We will just have the headers. Now if we try to look up a certain value in our data table, we won't get anything because there is no data present. So if we search in zero column index or if we search in one column index for the value or the name, because in one you have the name. So if we search for should be in column one, we won't get anything because there is no data present in clear data table. To check the same, what we could do is, uh, first of all, we we'll put a right line also and we could run it in debug mode. So in the local tab, we could actually see what's happening. So if you put a debug point here like this and we run it in debug mode. So our program control will flow and will pause it at right line. And from there we could easily debug each step what the value is. So this could be done if the program is really large and you want to get to know at what place it's going wrong. You could do like this. So over here in the local tab you could see the value of each variable. So if we just click on this. So it will get the value that yeah, it's present. The grade is present. The cell value is A because corresponding to should be the grade is A and the row index is zero. Now, over here you could see this is the DT and we have the value here. As we execute this clear data table, we press step into. The data table is now empty. If you now see the data table, it's empty. It only has the header. Now, if you again try to look up for a certain value in the data table, you would not get anything. So zero index is minus one means it's not present. Minus what's one indicates that there is no value. And if you right line the same, so the cell value is empty, you don't get anything. And row index is minus one indicating that there's nothing present. Okay. So on the similar line, 
there are uh, more data table activities present, which I'll be covering in the next video. But before closing, we'll see that how could we create data table without using build data table or without using generate data table. So we'll use invoke code. We'll write a code for that, that how could you create the creation of your data table. So there are many scenarios when you don't use activity, when you cannot use activity, you have to do the operations by writing the code or to make the code look more optimized and more clean. People generally do not prefer dragging in the activities one after the other. So they try to write a clean and more concise code. So what we could do here is we'll have a data table first, DT, you could name it. It could, it could be in and out that we are passing it also and we are even getting it as an out argument to be used further in the program, the data type is data table and the value we've already declared, so it's DT. And then we'll go on to edit code. So how do we write it? So first what we do is that we have this DT, we'll write new data table. Now what we're gonna do is we will add columns to our data table. So how we do it, we will add dt dot columns. So you will get to see if you do not get this option, then you can press control and space and you will get it columns like if you put in dot, we already get it. But if we do not get it, what you can do is you can press control plus and you'll get it. So add and then in the brackets and double quotes, you will write the column name. So first column is ID. Then similarly copied it and I'll change the column name. Then it's name. Then it's grade. Now what you're going to do, you want to add values to these columns. So one way is that you declare a data row and how you do it is you will write dim dr as data row. So one way is this. The other way is that you could directly add rows to data table like you've added columns. So for that it's dt.rows dot add and then you'll add in your values. So it's one, then the name which is should be, then the grade which is A. And similarly, you will add in one more rows, dt.rows dot add. And you will add in one more value, which is to comma Robert comma C. So like this, you have created your data table and you can do any manipulation you want to do in this. So I'll click on OK. And I'll comment this for the time being. So to see that uh, the way we have created, will it work or not? So I've commented the build data table and we'll see what output does this give. So we'll click on debug. So we could see that it's, it has created a data table with the required data which we've given. We could even see it in the locals that it's there. One more thing is what you can do is since the ID column has to be auto incremented every time. So instead of every time adding in one, two, you could make it as auto increment. So it would auto increment itself and you need not to pass the value of ID every time. So what that what you can do is you will define what all columns would be there in your DT. For that, you will write DT dot columns dot add range. Add ranges that you will be, you know, declaring all your columns at once. So it would be new data column. So 
so you get it here so you need not to type it the whole thing so you get it so how many columns do we have three so it's zero one two the indexing starts from zero so after mentioning the number of columns you will put in a curly braces and then you write new data column so the first one the name you write in double quotes it's id then separated by comma you write new data column then you write in name then comma new data column you will type in great that's the column name so once you've done this now what you need to do is you would need not to do this thing that dt dot columns dot add you need not to add because you've already added all the columns so now you will tell that which column has to be auto incremented so it's this auto increment now the seed and step also you could define seed is basically from what value you want to start suppose you want to start from 10 so the column numbering should start from 10 and then c step is that after 10 you want 11 or you want 12 or you want 13 so step is seed if you define as 10 and then step you define as 2 then it's 10 12 14 16 like that so auto increment is equal to true if you do not define anything that then it will start from one now uh, this column we have already added so there's no need of this and now you need not to add the value of id you will just pass in nothing that uh, nothing has to be printed over there you will just it will auto increment itself so uh, we're done now so if we you know add in one more row to see if it's working all fine or not so we'll add it we'll change the name to robot and we'll pass in the grade as a plus because robots are faster than humans so we will give a plus grade so now if we click on debug we'll see what our data table is You can even add try catch in the invoke code so that if there is any error in the invoke code, you could easily get to know about it because you cannot debug each line in the invoke code. So here we have our data table. We could see that whatever values we've mentioned, it's there. So this is a way of creating data table. You could do more complex calculations or more complex operations on data table this way by declaring it in invoke code and by doing all it all of the, it in invoke code by writing select queries link to queries by merging by copying the cloning so everything you could do like that so that's all for this video we'll cover all other activities relating to data table in our next video till then stay tuned and please don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you